Welcome to the basics of wheelchair racing equipment. Today we are going to be focusing on the front wheels as well as hand ring basics, hand ring coatings, and valve extenders. This is our fourth session in the series right now and we are super excited that we're actually going to continue this series for at least three more. So uh, we're, we're excited to have our special guests here and our panelists, and uh, we're gonna just dive right in. Uh, as a note too, we wanna remind everyone that you are on mute uh, just to minimize distractions. But if you have any questions that you wanna ask throughout the session, please feel free to use the Q&A button at the bottom of the screen and you can type in at any point in time. We will be recording this session uh, for future use as well. So. If you missed it, then you can tune in again. Uh, if you haven't already checked out Move United's Adapt at Home page, we encourage you to look at it there. There's a variety of different sports as well as uh, functional strength exercises to keep you busy during quarantine time. And we encourage you to tag us on social media at Move United Sport and use the hashtag Adapt at Home to show us how you're moving. As always, I'd like to introduce our, our panelists today, Daniel Romanchuk, who is a world champion as well as a major marathon winner and Paralympian, and Krieger Skabort, who's a Paralympian, an SB winner, and an Ironman World Championship record breaker. Uh, so thank you so much, guys, for joining us once again and having uh, sharing your expertise. I would also like to introduce Kim Romanchuk, who happens to be Daniel's mom and online science teacher, as well as uh, Daniel. Daniel's manager, who's going to be leading us through the session. So thank you and take it away, guys. All right. Um, so thank you, Lily. Um, so one of the uh, titles that didn't get listed there is that I'm Daniel's tech manager and I'm about to get fired from the position. <laughs> we, we have had, uh, we've had uh, lots and lots of <laughs> <laughs> lots and lots of uh, internet uh, problems this morning. And so uh, uh, right now I'm feeling about the same way I did back maybe five years ago or so. Um, was the first time that uh, Daniel had tried to change the hand ring coating on his uh, hand rings. And um, we didn't make a very good choice as to when to change it. I think we noticed there were big problems that had to be done right before the fast cow meet in uh, Indianapolis. And so we had followed some written directions and changed the, the rubber over um, and we're trying to use the rings that night, um, which was a big no-no uh, because it takes the contact cement a lot longer than that to dry. And the tires are really slippery um, when you first put them on the hand ring, uh, the, the, the tire coating. And uh, so we were trying to wrap fishing line around it to try to keep the hand ring coating from coming off while he's at this big, you know, for him at that point, this huge meet with all these, you know, guys who were going so fast. <laughs> and I just remember baking on the side of that track going, oh my goodness, this is, this is not good. Um, and so we'd like to, uh, hopefully uh, help uh, help you guys out. If you haven't uh, been through this process, maybe you'll be a little bit more educated about it than we were uh, when we first uh, started. So um, you're gonna have to bear with me here while I try to start. A lot of this stuff this time around um, was difficult to do live. And so we are gonna be sharing a pre-recorded video, hopefully, um, of this. So I may have to do a little bit of adjusting here, but let's see what we've got, I think. So the hand ring is pretty much where the power comes from. Um, so the athlete's going to be pushing on the hand ring and that force is gonna transfer through these uh, attachment points here to either, in this case, metal spokes or uh, if this were a carbon fiber disc, uh, just the carbon fiber. Um, so these attachment points here are actually pretty important pieces. Uh, so let's take a close look at those. So these hand rings usually will attach to every spoke that is on the outside of the wheel. Um, so if we take a closer look here, uh, this is from the back. Uh, if you look at one of these hand ring attachment points, it is made out of three uh, primary pieces. There is a bolt, and that bolt is going through two rubber-backed washers. Um, so those rubber-backed washers are actually uh, face they're facing each other, and they are sandwiching the spoke between them and the bolt that is running through those washers th and into the post of the hand ring is actually going to push the spoke from behind. And so if uh, 
this wheel would actually rotate this direction. The bolt is always pushing the spoke. And so I have a, a bare wheel here and the handring over here. And uh, so we're gonna go into a little bit more detail on how to attach them. Uh, so the hardware, as I mentioned before, are two little rubber back washers and a bolt. So you're going to want to put one of the rubber back washers uh, rubber facing up on the bolt, and then you're going to take the other one and put it rubber side facing down on the bolt. You may have to use a little bit of force to get them on, uh, but once you have them together, you're going to want to screw the bolt down into the handring post. So the wheel here, actually, until it has a handring on it, has no side to it. This could either be a left wheel or a right wheel, uh, it does not matter unless you have a handring on it. So attaching a handring here, I'm gonna, uh, so the, uh, the objective that I have in mind is to get one of these spokes against this bolt here. But the question is, do I come from this side or do I go in from this side in between those washers? Uh, and for the first ring, it does not matter. Pick a side and just make sure that it is on the same side on all of the attachment points. Uh, but on the second ring, you want to make sure that you do it on the opposite side. So I just had it on the right side of the uh, bolt, and now for my second ring, I would make sure that I have them all on the left side of the bolt. Uh, the next thing you're going to want to make sure of is that you're putting the handring on the correct side of the wheel. Uh, and so I have my axle sticking out here, and so I want to make sure that my handring is on the other side of the wheel. And so moving on to fitting these all in between the spokes, um, I've made little, I've uh, noticed little markings on a lot of these spokes, and so that um, just allows me to uh, have a... a sort of marker to go on and uh, to attach the all of the spokes. I haven't done this in probably, who, five years. Okay. So I have my handring on my wheel here. Uh, and so I have, uh, I had the hardware already installed on the ring and I just slid those spokes in between the washers so, and make sure everything is nice and uh, secure. And I have uh, used my Allen keys to uh, really secure all of these bolts down. Uh, and so these are all on the same side uh, going around. And so let's see which uh, side of a wheel that I've made here. So if uh, I have it on the right side here, I have the post of the handring attachment behind the spoke. And so if this wheel were to rotate like this, the post is behind the spoke, pushing it. And so I have made a right wheel. If I were to accidentally attach this on my left side, what would happen is I would be pushing the post away from the spoke and uh, all that would be holding that uh, spoke in the uh, sandwich would just be that, that pressure of the sandwich of the washers. And so that's, it would lead to very poor energy transfer. And so you wanna always make sure that the wheel is on the correct side. One last thing to note with these kinds of handring attachment points is that you never want to grab them if, uh, if you're trying to stop. Always use your brake. Uh, so say this wheel were rotating and I tried to grab the handring to stop. That would lead to the handring and the uh, post and bolt and attachment to the hardware to stop moving, but the wheel would still attempt to keep moving. And so that can lead to the spoke just popping out from between the sandwich here, and the, the wheel would keep moving, and I would have a, a handring or maybe two in my hands, uh, and so that is never a place you want to be. Always use your brake if you need to stop. So uh, an alternate to using the traditional rubber-backed washers is actually just to use this little clip here. 
So this is just a plastic clip that will uh, slide onto the spoke here. So I just slid it on, it slides off, and uh, then a your bolt is going to go through there, uh, and then that bolt will get screwed into the post. So there it's going in. I have the, the bolt on one side and the spoke on the other. With this, it is actually the opposite of the traditional rubber washers in that the spoke is actually supposed to be trailing behind the post. Uh, so in the with the rubber washers, the post is supposed to push the spoke. Uh, but with these, the post is actually supposed to pull the spoke. Um, and uh, so this would actually rotate like this, and note that we are on the inside of the wheel here. Uh, and so the, uh, the really great thing about these is that if you happen to grab the hand ring in an attempt to stop, there is a less of a chance that something will go drastically wrong uh, just because there is uh, plastic encasing the spoke, uh, and so this is actually sort of like a plastic taco, sort of, uh, and it is kind of scooping the spoke, and so there's really nowhere for it to go this way, and if uh, it tries to go this way, it's going to encounter the post. So I wanted to go briefly into how to install a handring onto a carbon fiber wheel. So I'm going to start by just laying the ring on the wheel in approximately the right uh, area. Then I'm going to take all of my bolts and I'm going to, one by one, uh, put them through the slot that I have for my hand ring. And I'm going to try and pinpoint where that one hole is. So I can see that hole right there. From here, I have my bolts on through my hand ring. So I'm going to put my wheel up like this so you can see the bolts that are sticking through the, uh, the wheel here. Next, I'm going to grab my rubber-backed washers. And so you want to make sure that you have rubber-backed washers wherever there could be an area of high pressure uh, and a low surface area on a uh, carbon fiber piece. And so I've just put one uh, rubber-backed washer here, and I'm now going to take a nut and screw that on uh, until I just can't do it with my hand anymore and then just repeat that process. So uh, so I cannot hand tighten these on to the appropriate uh, uh, level of uh, torque that they need to be on with. So I'm going to use my hex keys here and put that into the head of the bolt. And at the end, I'm going to adjust my uh, adjustable wrench here to fit the nut size. And then I'm just going to Rotate it on until it feels nice and taut. Uh, you want to be careful not to go uh, too uh, aggressive on these, uh, just because it is carbon fiber and uh, it's relatively de delicate. And uh, so, just go till it's nice and uh, nice and firm, and then you can stop. This is the last nut here. So tighten this on and. Uh, that is pretty much all that you need to do. These are relatively simple to uh, take on and off. There we go. Um, so, uh, so Krieger, uh, can you tell us about ordering hand rings? We're talking about putting them on. Um, what about when you go to order them? Um, well, let me start. I, I, I was ready to watch that video game. It was really good. <laughs> Thank you, Daniel. <laughs> Great job on that. Yeah, I, I remember long ago, uh, man, it was, I, I struggled with this hand rooms and I just couldn't get it in the center of the spoke wheel. And I finally got it right. And I thought, yippee, I, I, I got it. And then when I put when I put it on my wheel, it was the wrong size. So, <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> then I had to do it all over again. Yeah, one of those days, right? We all have to go through it. You just have to bear with yourself and not say bad words. <laughs> not that easy. But um, yeah, push rims, hand rims are, you know, it's such, a, such an important part of, of the racing chair and the mechanism and the power 
and um, uh, the choices are are important, but it's not that easy. You know, last week we listened to um, to Adams, uh, uh, Coach Adam, how he told us about how we can, you know, uh, one of the easy ways is to the knuckle to the elbow measurement. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's it it sounds simple, but there's a lot more to it. I would say if we can get that first slide up, it will be great. If if, we, if you uh, think of a hand room, um, you th immediately think of of a gear. Okay, so that's one. That's the only gear you have in your racing chair. Uh, and when you when you use that gear, there's a lot going into it: power, energy. You're gonna slam it. You're gonna you're gonna be you're gonna be hard on it on, on that room, um, because the energy is coming from your hand to your glove into your rim and from your rim it's going to go into your wheel and that's going to propel the racing chair in a forward motion um so when you decide on buying getting new push-ups or you, you you order your chair and uh and you say okay what's what's this now so first of all i think the size uh there's, there's quite a few factors but size take size first this is a 15 and a half size push -up. so if you as you can see it's the outside measurement um, of the edge, outside edges of the, the hand room. That is 15 and a half inches. 15 and a half inches uh, is this is basically what I currently use. Um, you can, um, you know, you can move your uh, uh, your sizes up and down. You know, in, in the years I've been racing, 14 and a half was my was my lowest and up to 16 uh, was the biggest uh, size that I used. Uh, I would say in general now, you know, you, the sizes are very between 13 inches and about 17 inches. 13 inches would be someone with a, you know, shorter arms um, uh, or, a, a, you know, a, a, a younger person um, and then, um, 17 inches would be someone with super long arms like Daniel. Uh, you know, 14 and a half, I think it's 17 inches, right, Daniel? 14 and a half to 15 and a half is a good average for, for the guys. And 13 and a half, maybe to 14 and a half or so, is a good average for, for women. Um, can we flip to the next slide? Uh, push um, versus rubber. Okay. All right. So this is going to be a choice that that's really a personal kind of feel, whether you're going to use tire or, or rubber. On the left-hand side, you're going to see tire. So you're going to have your, your hand room covered by either one of these. Uh, the, the great thing about the tire is uh, it, it's uh, hard and it adapts to, or it, it gets the energy real, real into the ring a little bit quicker. The rubber is a, is a little bit softer. Um, it's, uh, uh, it's definitely more durable, the, the rubber. Um, the rubber would last quite a long time. If you, you know, it, it, can, it, it can last you a season or two. The rubber where the tire, I would say, you know, a couple of weeks, if you push a lot, it's, it's not going to last that long. Um, the next, the other thing you're going to think of is the feel of it. So the rubber does feel a little bit more, um, it's a softer feel to it. Uh, the, the tire, the tire has got an immediate impact. The feeling's going to be a little bit tougher. I would say in the winter, almost I would try to use rubber for myself more because it's, it's a little bit soft, softer. Performance wise, you know, that's, you know, that's, that's a personal choice. Um, you're gonna, I, I know top athletes that use rubber. I know top athletes that use tire. So one is not really faster than the other. It's, it's more, it's more of, of a personal choice. Uh, reliability, um, the rubber, uh, you know, some, some people think the rubber does a little bit more in better in the cold weather. Uh, and when it's warm weather, I would definitely have them, you know, equal. It's not, not really a, a difference or, or it's just normal weather. Um, 
but when it when it's hot and humid like here in atlanta where i live the the rubber get it's a little bit uh yeah it's, it's risky because you know if you do a race like peach tree and um you sweat a lot and the and the sweat drips onto the rubber that rubber becomes like soap and there's almost no way to 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 get it to to grip again that's <laughs> I've had it happen actually in, in Greece at the Paralympic Marathon in Athens in the year 2004. I, on the one side it was sunny and the other side it was so uh, just, you know, one direction marathon. And on the not sunny side, I had um, a sweat drip on the rubber and I slipped with the one hand and the other hand was fine. I'm telling you that was a terrible experience. It was, it was, not, it was not easy to finish that marathon. I finished it, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, next thing um, about rain. Rain is about, I would say they're very equal in rain. Rain, it depends on what you use, what kind of glister you use, spider tag or, or regular glister. Um, uh, yeah, what's next? Can we flip to the next? Uh, right, here we're gonna go to different si different kind of of wheels when you when you put when you order a push room or a hand room so in general uh the spoke wheels have between nine and 14 spokes um so you gotta make, make sure when you buy it they'll probably ask you also as well how many spokes does the wheel have for the spoke attachments um the zip wheel um has got five attachment points as you can see in the middle there so that's also something you have to take notice of if you chop and uh, change wheels, uh, use your old hand rims. You gotta try to be consistent on one wheel all the way through. Uh, next one is the Karima wheel. It's got the Karima, uh, so the Zip and Karima are the disc wheels, right? So the Karima has got uh, six attachment points. And for all those, uh, you gotta be sure you're on the, on the right track when you order. Next uh, slide will be, um, where, okay, all right. So there you can see that the, the the posts um, on the hand room. And when you receive a hand room, most of them will be with posts. But, uh, you know, definitely on, on, a, on, a, on a spoke uh, wheel and also on a wheel that have slots, mostly long slots, uh, like, a, like a zip wheel. Uh, those little, the, the posts uh, are threaded um, next to it in the middle there. You can see the hardware, and that's how Daniel explained to you how to fix the wheel to the I mean the rim, the rim to the um, to the to the wheel. Um, next slide is um, is a little bit different again with the with the tabs. The tabs are L shaped and they slot it. Um, so some wheels, uh, some pushrooms will have this on, and the reason for that is when the wheel, um, the holes in the wheel is is centered in one position and then you need uh, a variable place so you can you can get your hardware through the push room and uh, you know all the way into the wheel um and there's the hardware so for for this is like for the posts i mean the the, the tabs you're gonna under have three pieces of hardware it's the it's the the, the bolt and the little washer and the nuts um Okay, can we flip next slide? Will be all right. So, um, the 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 rooms are always standing off. Um, there's a little bit of a clearance between the wheel and the rim, as you can see here. Uh, and sometimes you feel like you need a little bit more clearance. You can always add a spacer between the the post and the wheel itself to bring the po the the um, hand rim out a little bit. I've, you know, if you need a little bit more space for your glove to fit down all the way into your ring. Um, it, it's a lot about how your style is and what kind of glove you use uh, when you use this clearance and the space there. Long ago, I used flat gloves and I actually want to have my, my the, the clearance a little bit closer. And then I cut the, the I used to cut the, um, uh, the post shorter. But when you cut this, the post shorter, you have to use a tap to to um to thread it again okay so that is um all about hand rims and how to buy an order and what to look for when you do that 
what is next? Um, are we going into, oh, I think that's me next, right? Oh, okay, so we can go straight into the wheels. Um, uh, I think, I think we, I'm gonna do the, um, let's talk about how to attach rubber first to the, to the hand ring. And um, this is, uh, are, you, are you guys ready? I'm gonna do it live. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I've got a camera cameraman here with me, right? So be, bear with me. I'm uh, uh, if if I if I mess it up, it's all because of there's a lot of eyes on me. But uh, no problem. We'll we'll get it done. We'll get it done. All right. So you when you get a wheel from a new wheel, it will have the hand rims on already. Okay. And sometimes, if you look closer, this hand rim's got a coil on, and the only reason for that coil is. Um, when uh, when they when they attach or bond the rubber to the ring the ring at the shop, they coil it so it can stay on for a couple of days or forty eight hours. So what you're gonna do is you just use a pair of clippers and you're gonna clip it and uncoil the whole thing. Uncoil the whole, the whole thing. So don't use this; it's just gonna mess up your arms when you start pushing with it. Okay. Okay, so first you're gonna, right, that shouldn't happen, but it's okay. First, okay, so after a couple of months or a year or like Daniel, within three days, your hand room is gonna look like this, right? It's gonna be all coming apart, you've done a lot of work, and then, okay, now I gotta take uh, action and change the ring. Right, let's get started with that. Can you bring that video a bit low with me? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna just show you the lower part of it. So you have a good, um, good bird view here. Okay, so first thing I always do is, is I use an adjustable grip and uh, just work to get the rubber off, work it off, okay? You can hear how it's coming apart. And as you, as you work it like this, it actually cleans it up a little bit as well. All right, so you can, you can do the whole ring and then you can start pulling it off. Um, and so you've got the bare, the bare hand ring like this, okay? Then, uh, to prepare the bare ring, I'm gonna use a little bit of sandpaper. All right, sand it nicely, yeah, all the way. Nice and, it's a kind of a rough texture of sandpaper. Okay, okay, I did the whole ring and I'm happy with that. And then, I'm gonna, next step, is I want the, the, the rubber to sit tight on the ring. And one way of getting it to sit tight on the ring without spinning the rubber, I use a little bit of double side tape. Now, so I just used, in this case, I just used, this is the floor tape. I just use this and uh, so I do the whole ring, but I do the, the outside of the ring where the contact area of your hand is gonna be. So the outside of the ring, I just use this little double side tape. It's not very wide. Uh, and it's nice and sticky. Okay, we got it. But of course, you're gonna do the whole surface, right? All the way around. So here you can see it's, it, 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 it hangs to my finger here. So it's nice and sticky. All right. Okay, next step. Now I got my rubber. So Daniel, um, is doing the tire part, I'm doing the rubber part. This is, uh, you know, there's no right or wrong here. Anyone have, have you know, when you have an idea, you can do it as long as it, as it sits at the end of the, the process. Okay, so when I use rubber, I, I sand the inside, it's really cut open. If it's not cut open, you have to cut it open all the way from one to the other side. So I roughen it up a little bit with a sandpaper on the inside. So when I add, use my glue, super glue, it will sit nice and, and tight. So now start feeding it over the ring. All right, here we go. Start feeding it over the ring, okay. This is the part, well, I usually actually start in the middle between, you're gonna start between two posts, okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, because you want to end between two posts, otherwise it's not a good um, final um, hold for the for the two edges to connect. 
Okay, feed it, feed it. So you're gonna go all the way around, right? Okay. Now it's all the way around and I'm ready for my, my glue. And I like to use uh, some kind of super glue. Usually one, the, the gel one is, is a little bit better. So now I'm gonna go little by little. It's a little bit of a timely process, but once you're done, you can immediately use it. So I'm gonna first a little bit on the bare hand ring, and then on the inside edge, one of the inside edges of the rubber, okay? So there's one on both. Remember on the back side, it's holding now by, by the double, double side tape. So press it, one, two, three, nice and hard, okay? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Okay, let go, voila. Okay, so this is my first, the first uh, part is good. Okay, number two. Again, a little, and a little bit on the one rubber side edge. Okay, press three, four, nine, ten. I did a <laughs> shortcut, okay? But it's holding, See, there it's holding, so. And then when you come to the post, you just work around it. It doesn't have to just add a little bit um, of your, um, on both sides, a little bit maybe, uh, your glue. Okay, now I got it all the way around. And it's gonna look like this, okay? So, but sometimes like this one, I didn't have a good finish there. It's close, but not close enough. So what I wanna do here is, I want to use a, uh, this is like a, like just a regular uh, athletic tape. So athletic tape, just to, you know, prevent those edges from lifting when you start pushing. Couple of times, uh, there's already one time over and then another time over. Okay, and then I'm done with that. So that, that, did, that didn't go too bad, right? Um, and when you are done, when you're at this point, uh, some, some guys like a little bit sandpaper because it's always, when you start pushing, when you start pushing, it's going to be slippery, right? So it, whether it's a, a, a regular rubber pushing or, sorry, or when it's a full uh, tire handling, it's always better to, to take your time and uh, don't be in a hurry because you're going to slip for the first uh, day or two when you're on your training stations. And you're going to feel it right here, and you're going to feel it right here when you, when you miss the, the first thing. So in short, yeah, it's doable. It takes time. It's practice. But um, yeah, we all should have fun with this. It's part of the, the whole experience of wheelchair racing. Daniel does it often, often, often because he's uh, on the road a lot. So he does it at, at night in his dreams. It happens by itself. <laughs> I, I think I've, I've got to do that uh, around once a month and then uh, for about a week afterwards I'm just uh, I'm just again like like you said trying to just hold, hold my tongue yeah. that just slips for uh, you know however yeah. long it takes for you to wear it in yeah and, and usually after you know after like Daniels after we once you have that ring uh, on your on the line of your glove, it it, it finds a, a nice area where it starts gripping better and better, and better and better, and over time it gets worse and worse, and that's the time you can start thinking of you know changing the hand the the rubber. Yeah. I think at, at one point we got uh, just ended up ordering a, a, a couple of extra sets of push rims so that Daniel keeps one that's in uh, good, great pushing form if he's got a big race coming up and he sets that aside and always has one in rotation kind of thing. So you good can, idea. you know, if it's, yeah. <laughs> It's a, it's a process. Uh, that's, that's for sure. Um, so, you know, um, if, 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 you, if you do not want to do this, you can always send it to Eagle Sport. They, they do it for you. That's the one company here that, that would do it for you. Yeah, I think Barry, just for anyone who's interested, I think he charges about $75 for a pair of rings to recoat them. Um, yeah. 
So I think you just you have to take care of the shipping. Um, um, mm -hmm. But that's uh, that's uh, it, it, uh, Krieger, I think, has the, the smarter way of doing it here with the tubing and the, but uh, Daniel likes to live dangerously. So I have to be the safety officer here and give the disclaimers for the next <laughs> for the next session. Um, so um, we're going to be looking at the tire um, end of things and how to put a um, tire on and um, it involves he heat guns, number one. Um, so um, it, as always, if you don't, uh, uh, first off, heat guns will burn anybody's hands, right? They'll burn anybody's skin wherever. Um, but uh, if you don't have sensation in your legs, uh, be really careful if you're using this heat gun. Um, don't set it, obviously, on your legs. It's a good way to get a, a, a good uh, third degree burn. Um, so uh, the other thing is that heat guns and um, open flames, some people use, um, uh, use other things, but um, we're going to be using contact cement, which is really volatile um, and flammable. And so we do not want to mix heat sources and, con and uh, liquid contact cement. So you to make sure um, that when you're doing the stuff that Daniel's talking about, that you have safety in mind uh, first off. So we're going to try to uh, share the next video. So the first step to replacing the ring coating is to remove the old tire, which you can see is worn through here. You should wear leather gloves and use a heat gun to heat a 4 to 5 inch segment of the old tire, starting at the seam and heating along the tire edges on the back. After around 15 to 30 seconds, try to pull the tire off the ring with pliers until it gets hard. Uh, the first part of this tire on the left was heated too much and left adhesive behind, but the right part came off cleanly. You can use the tire you just peeled off to tack the leftover adhesive off while the ring is still hot. Uh, you want to repeat this process of heating and peeling until the tire is off the whole ring. Often the adhesive comes off nicely with the tire, except along the back edges where there is no tire covering the adhesive. Again, just tack that off. The key to the glue coming off cleanly is heating the tire to the exact right amount. Not too much, not too little. Now we need to prep the new coating by cutting a tubular tire on either side of the valve, which frees up the tube on the inside. Pull the tube out and set it aside for later. Uh, now you want to cut around along the natural folds of the tire on either side to remove the excess backing. This should leave enough tire to wrap around the ring with the edges not quite touching each other. Lastly, you want to lay the tire along the circumference of the ring to get the right length that you will need. To coat the tire, I use DAP Weldwood Contact Cement, which is highly flammable so keep it away from all heat sources. It is also good to be in a well-ventilated area. You want to paint the back of the tire with the contact cement, making sure to cover every little bit of it, edges and everything. Then paint the ring, holding it by the attachments, and then make sure to paint the front and back. Then you want to repeat, uh, painting the tire and the ring again. After this, you need to wait for the glue to dry, uh, and so it is tacky but does not come off on a clean finger. This is too wet, but a couple of minutes later, it is just right. Uh, slightly tacky, but not uh, coming off on my fingers, as is the ring. Now that the glue has dried to the right amount, start laying the tire on the ring between attachment points. You want to make sure to center the tread on the part of the ring you contact during your stroke, keeping the seam towards the back of the ring. Pinch the tire on and wrap a piece of hockey tape around it. Now pull and stretch the rest of the tire along the ring. And so that pulling will cause the tire to naturally curve around the ring, making it easy to apply. Uh, notice you can handle the sticky part of the tire because it's mostly dry, uh, but it will stick well to the ring because the ring also has adhesive on it. Uh, both surfaces need to have adhesive for it to stick well. So keep stretching and watching that the tread stays centered where you want it. It has a tendency to drift if you don't pay attention. 
And so just like the first part of the tire, the last part of the tire, do not stretch that, uh, just pinch it on. If you stretch it, it will tend to pull away from the other part of the seam and there will be a gap. Uh, once the ring has tire all the way around, cut the excess tire you gain by stretching so that it just fits to that first section of tire. Do not overlap as this will not stick because the tread surface does not have adhesive on it. Uh, so now wrapping it, uh, this is where that old tube comes in. And so you may need two tubes to coat or to wrap the whole ring, uh, but the the point is to keep the tire securely fixed to the ring while its adhesive fully dries. Uh, you want to leave it somewhere for at least 48 hours, but longer is usually much better. So the big points to remember that uh, are that contact cement is volatile and flammable. No heat sources are allowed around it when you're using it and use it in a well-ventilated area. Coach your tire and ring thoroughly and do not overlap edges since only one surface will it have adhesive. Uh, things won't stick well. Uh, let the adhesive dry until it's tacky and not wet. If you try to apply it while it's wet, you will have a slippery mess on your hands. Literally. Stretch the tire while applying it except at the ends of a section. Uh, and let that newly coated ring dry for at least 48 hours and remove the wrapping before use. Uh, the wrapping could be a tube like we just used, or it could be coiled tape. And so there will be a picture with a fresh ring with some tape on it. Uh, it is not a friction aid. Uh, you're supposed to remove it before using the ring. Uh, and so that is how you coat a hand ring with a tire. All right. So hopefully we won't see any of that tape anywhere because Krieger talked about it and Daniel talked about it. <laughs> Left on. <laughs> oh, Krieger, you want to head off with the, the front wheels here. Um, yes, let's go with the front wheels. Okay. Also, I, uh, not such a big choice with, as with hand rings. We have multiple sizes. Um, the front wheel is definitely quite a bit smaller than the back wheels, as, as you've seen on the rising chairs. So we mostly use 20 inch front wheels. This is a, an example of a, of a spoke wheel, uh, obviously. Um, 20 inch is the size, um, you get 18 inches. Well, long ago we had 16 and 14 inch, inch wheels. I think you still get 18 inch, but most even juniors still um, use, also use um, the 20 inch wheel. So if you're gonna measure that distance that I've marked there, it's not gonna be 20 inches. So I don't know exactly how that is a 20 inch wheel, but uh, I'm not gonna go into details, but uh, yeah. So yes, this is a regular spoke wheel. So let's flip over and see uh, what we have. Okay, here we go. We have a carbon fiber wheel, which is of course your elite more of, of a high performance wheel. Although the spoke wheel is also good. Um, but this is an example of uh, a wheel that, um, you know, he would use for, you know, really racing. And um, it's just the next step up from, from a um, spoke wheel. Um, so if you compare the spoke wheel and the carbon wheel, let's flip to the next up slide. Um, okay, so there's your spoke wheel and your carbon carbon wheel. So I'm going to race now this weekend, and um, I'm going to go uh, to a marathon. It's the oh man, it's going to be windy. The wind is going to come out uh, from the from the right side, and it's going to be very gusty. Um, maybe I should take the wheel with less uh, um, of a risk with side winds. So then I'll take the wheel the wheel with le the least surface. Side surface is the, is the spoke wheel um, because your front wheel is so light you're going to be whipped to, from one side to the other if you use a wheel that is more like a like a flag or a sail. So that is one one way of looking to of you know when you when you decide what kind of wheel performance wise what you're going to use. Um, if you have perfect conditions um, uh, or maybe a slight wind, I would definitely. I recommend, mostly recommend the, the wheel on the right side, the carbon wheel. 
Um, one reason would be, first reason would be it's got less spoke. So every spoke that you see there, I think that front wheel on the left side has got 14 spokes or maybe 16 and the one on the right side only 10 spokes. So each of the spokes have drag. So you want to go as little drag as possible. And of course, the, the, the shape of the, um, the shape of the carbon itself is very aerodynamic. Um, a lot more so a better airflow. And uh, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to help the wheel to, to rotate faster and keep momentum faster, better. The, um, the, of course, the, the wheel with the carbon is a little bit heavier on the outside. So it also helps the wheel to, to maintain uh, momentum better. Um, the difference between price is uh, quite a bit as well. The Corima always, when you go to carbon, carbon is just expensive. So you're going to pay a good bit more for a carbon wheel than for a spoke wheel. But I, I would say if you're starting, starting out, don't, you know, go expensive. Just, you know, use your regular spoke wheel. It's great as well. A lot of us still use spoke wheels, even if it's a, a big event. Um, or, you know, uh, you just see what, what the circumstances and conditions is. And then you, you make your choice according to that. If you look at a couple of things like uh, the hub, that's on the, on the next slide. Um, uh, yes, okay. So if you look at the hub from the top like this now, some, uh, some wheels has a hub that's a little bit narrower. Uh, like this, this one here, the hub is actually a little bit narrower than, the, than on the carbon wheel. So you might need a spacer to get it in between your, your, uh, the fork because the fork is, is uh, like a bicycle fork, two-sided, right? Um, uh, if it's too tight a little bit, you can squeeze or open the fork a little bit. Wouldn't do it any harm at all. Um, you'll get it in with the two bolts from the, from the sides. The one thing about a wheel like this, if you have a flat tire, of course, you need to take the wheel off when you have a flat tire, not like a wheel um, on the back that's one sided uh, connected only. But if you do have a flat tire and a wheel like this in your race, you can finish the race with it. It shouldn't be a problem. You can just, you know, get going and, and, fin and do, your, do your repair afterwards. In short, this was about uh, front wheels. Let's see, Kim, what's, what, are we what else are we talking about? Um, I think we've got a fair number of questions. Um, we were supposed to do, I think valve extenders um, is probably is going to cut us too short on the questions. So we'll maybe try to uh, get the questions and then uh, we'll push valve extenders to another, uh, <laughs> to another session. Um, thank you for that information, Craig. That's an interesting new front wheel there. Um, um, so let's go to some of the, the questions that we have. Um, let's see here. We've got, um, when you travel for a meet, how many backup tire rim combos do you carry with you in case of a failure? Um, this might be interesting for both you. Krieger, why don't you uh, tell them what you do and Daniel will tell them because uh, I think that might depend on the athlete a little bit. Uh, I usually then take one, maybe sometimes two. It, it depends on uh, how many events I'm doing when I travel. When there's multiple events, I'll take plenty of spares front and back. If I do have the capacity to travel with, with an extra set of wheels, yes, I take that as well. Um, if it's one race and it's a short trip and it's not that big of a deal to me, then I'll just use the one set that I, that I have. But it's always better. More is better. Uh, if you can handle it, um, it just safe the aspect. Yep. Yeah, I'm uh, pr pretty similar. I just and kind of uh, see where I'm going. If it's a uh, a big city marathon, um, then you know I might take a, a few more tires. Uh, if they're you know I know they're going to be a lot of potholes. Um, and yeah, I mean it all depends on like you said uh, when I went to uh, when I went to the games. Um, you know, I had, I think, uh, two, maybe even two extra pairs of wheels just in case, uh, you know, things get lost or, uh, it crashes. And so it really depends on, uh, yeah, where, where you're going, uh, how much do you, do you value, uh, that race? Yeah. Um, I think, uh, 
I'm trying to think of like, is when you're actually racing guys. Um, I think that plays mm -hmm. in as well. It's like, I think everybody usually yeah. carries one spare. Um, but I think for Chicago. Think, yeah. Uh, for Chicago, because a, uh, a game uh, slot was on the line, I actually, I think I had uh, two tires with me um, where I usually only carry one. So again, it's just to evaluate the race. And sometimes um, I think for the front wheel, because as you were saying, Krieger, that um, you know, yeah, you got to take the you got to take the wheel off in order to change the the tire um, for a big race. I think for like Peachtree this past year um, that had a lot of a uh, lot of prize money on the line. Um, you know, there was a full uh, Daniel had a full front wheel um, with a tire ready to go um, that was at the start. So if any time up right before the start he got a flat, you could just switch out that wheel. Um, so, um, let, let me tell you a, a, a cool experience that happened to me. Uh, I did Honolulu Marathon long ago, and uh, I was sitting, uh, it was raining. You know, there's usually a lot of dirt and stuff on the road, and we're sitting under a little roof. And, uh, and where I was sitting, I just heard, <laughs> so I had a flat tire right there. So I flipped my tire, pull it out, changed my tire, everything right there, I was ready to go. And the next moment, <laughs> I didn't move myself. I didn't think it was right there. So Jun Hiramishi from Japan was there. Oh man, I was so happy he was there. He gave me his spare tire. <laughs> and I used his tire and I moved out of the way there. And uh, I, I owed him some money after I won. The, I, I was lucky to win the race just because of that tire. And I owed him some money after that. <laughs> but yeah, anything can happen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's for sure. Okay. Um, so question here, uh, where can you get the U-clip brackets for the push rims, um, the ones that, uh, to replace the washers? Um, uh, Trigger, I think you, uh, you want to take that one? <laughs> the the, the U-clips is uh, mainly what Eagle use, Eagle Sports okay. use, so you can get it from Barry Ewing. Um, that's the, I think that's the, the to-go place for, for the U-clips. Yep. Um, okay. Uh, let's see here. Um, Krieg, uh, do you leave the double-sided tape on the hand rim and then apply the super glue and rubber? Um, and then uh, answer that and then we'll, we'll get to the second part of the question. Okay. So, so the, the, the double-sided tape will go on the, on the outer edge, right? The small section. Uh, the rubber will go over. I leave the the, um, the double sided tape on because that's going to hold the prevent the rubber from turning. The only time when I take it off is later on when my when the push rim is like this. Then I take the double sided tape off and clean it with sandpaper, and then put new a new uh, piece of double sided tape on. Makes sense. Is that uh, kind of my answer that you needed? Makes sense to us, um, hopefully. Okay. Um, does, uh, so, so Krieger, when you pull the, the tubing off with the vice grip, um, does, that, does that leave the tape behind? Is that why you have to use the sandpaper or is the sandpaper for a different purpose? No, the sandpaper uh, paper is, is my, mainly to take the, 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 the old kind of glue, gooey stuff off. Okay. Because that double-sided tape, once you pull it off, it doesn't, it doesn't hold anymore. You clean that off. And if you don't, if you put new double sided tape on, on the, over the old, it doesn't sit well. You just have to clean it up nicely. Gotcha. Um, okay. And so, um, do you recommend cleaning the hand rim with acetone at any time? Yes. Yeah, I, I've used acetone several times on, on my hand rings. Yes. If uh, acetone will take the, the, the residue off, which is good. Um, so if you don't get it with sandpaper, uh, use, use acetone and then afterwards a little bit sandpaper. Sandpaper roughens, uh, roughens the surface a little bit as well. And uh, everything just holds better when, when the surface is a little bit rougher. Right. Okay. Um, okay. And we had a question from, um, actually from on, uh, from uh, one of the posts yesterday. And this actually goes back to um, our last times topic. Um, this was uh, talking about camber choice for somebody who is um, 
ordering a new chair and uh, mostly does marathons. Um, there's specifics to the question in that he's a T53 um, and uh, wanted some advice about camber. Um, but I just wondered if maybe we could revisit some of those factors. I mean, I know, you know, I, I guess if the, the, the camber is less, it's going to roll better because um, it's closer to a vertical tire, um, but it's um, not going to be as stable, but then the shoulder width. So how does that play in with a T53? Um, it's a good question, uh, you know, because it's so personal there, but I just find um, all the years of experience that I've seen, it, it looks like the T53s are a little bit on, the, on more camber than, than the T54s. Um, I would say a 12 or a 13 degree will be, will be a good choice. Uh, maybe not 11, but a 12 or a 13. If you can handle the turns, good. And you're not too, uh, you feel you're, you can take a little bit of risks. Um, uh, and you have good control, you can go to 12, 12 degrees. But, you know, both those are 12 or 13, I would suggest. That's my suggestion. Can you explain a little bit more just for anybody who might not um, understand uh, for a T53 what um, what sorts of troubles they would have turning a corner or something along those lines? Why does that increased camber uh, yeah. matter for them? Uh -huh. Okay, so when, I, when I'm in my racing chair uh, as an amputee and I take a, a corner that is a 90 degrees, quite a sharp, tight turn, uh, just because I have so much um, trunk function, I can lean, it's a left turn, I can, I'm going to go this way now, so I can lean my body into the turn. Um, what a T53 can do a lot of times, that I, what I see they do, when they make a left turn, they put their left hand out, just to bring more, to have more weight on the left side of the chair. And I've seen that many times happen, and it does make a difference as well. So trunk function is, is a big issue, or how much weight you can have on the side you're gonna to turn to. That's an interesting ob observation. I haven't, ever, uh, I haven't ever paid attention to that. I guess I don't see it during the race. Um, but yeah, the, the, a T53 would be able to control their arm, maybe not their trunk yeah. so much. So yeah, that, yeah. that's a... Yeah. I, Heinz Fry, Heinz Fry, that was uh, for the long time the world's best marathon athlete. Uh, and uh, I used to see him like this often. I was always wondering, you know, how well it works. And now I tried it too. It actually works. But then you have your one hand, of course, only on the steering. So you need good control. Uh, right. But as much as you can, yeah, lean into it. Okay. And uh, last question, real quickly. I know we have to wrap up here. Um, do you wrap tape around, for Krieger, when you do the tubing, uh, the rubber, um, do you wrap tape around it um, or do you, um, do you have to let it dry for any amount of time afterwards? Uh, when, you, when you use uh, super glue, super glue is instant, you know, it's 10 seconds. So I can fix it. I mean, I can wrap it and I can go out right, right away afterwards. There's no wrapping as well because super glue is, it's the amount of <clears throat> time you hold it. That's going to be the important time, that 10 to 15 seconds. But don't take shortcuts like, like I did today. You've got to go the, 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 full, the full time. So. Very good. All right, Lily, I think it's over to you now. Yes. All right. Thank you so much, everyone, for all the great information. Uh, I know some of the videos may have been a little bit quiet or a little bit glitchy, but that's okay. We are going to have the original videos embedded in the YouTube videos. So if things um, weren't quite clear to you, it's okay. We'll upload it to YouTube and it'll be the original ones. Uh, so thank you for your patience in that. And Daniel and Kim and Krieger, thank you again for joining us today. Uh, we look forward to having you again next week. We are going to be a little bit later in the day. So it's going to be Thursday, July 2nd from 4 o'clock to 5 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We will send out a registration link in the follow-up email for that. But this session has been recorded. It's been streaming to Facebook Live. And we are excited to have you guys on for the next couple sessions to just learn more and dive deeper in. Uh, so before you exit out, there is a survey link in the chat box, as well as when you exit out of Zoom, it'll work 
request you to complete the survey. And we'd love to hear your thoughts on the session as well as things that you want to know about in the future, as well as what we can improve on. Uh, so we'd love for you to take that survey, please. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. But thank you again, everyone, for joining us. And we hope you have a great weekend. And we'll see you next week.